Welcome to the GRESB training program. This lesson will cover how to complete the asset assessment management component using the GRESB assessment portal and covers the first part of the management component. We'll introduce the asset assessment management component and describe its aspects and their scoring weightings. For an introduction to the overall infrastructure asset assessment, refer to the lesson titled Asset Assessment Structure. Next, we'll go through indicators aspect by aspect, providing guidance and examples of how to report on each indicator in the assessment portal. We will also explain how materiality-based scoring applies to the management component. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to complete the first part of the management component of the infrastructure asset assessment. After this lesson, we recommend that you follow the lesson Asset Assessment Management Components Part 2. First, we'll take a look at how the management component fits into the broader asset assessment. The GRESB Infrastructure Asset Assessment consists of a management component and a performance component. This lesson focuses on the management component, which looks at management and processes and is pitched at the organizational level. The management component consists of five aspects, leadership, policies, reporting, risk management, and stakeholder engagement. It is composed of 28 indicators. The green circles are scored indicators. The weightings of each aspect are shown here. The management component contributes 40% of the score of the GRESB asset assessment. The first aspect of the management component is leadership. This aspect evaluates how the entity integrates ESG into its overall business strategy. The first indicator of this aspect is on entity materiality assessment. A materiality assessment is an exercise widely used to inform sustainability reporting and communication strategies. This indicator is distinct from the GRESB materiality assessment indicator, RC7, in the reporting characteristics. That indicator provides a standardized materiality assessment used for materiality-based scoring in the asset assessment, whereas this indicator assesses whether the entity undertook its own materiality assessment. When selecting yes, two nested elements appear, the first covering identification of material ESG issues from the entity's operations, and the second about engagement with relevant stakeholders to identify material issues. The two elements are each allocated half of the points for this indicator. If you did not address either of these elements, select no. This indicator is worth up to 1.8 points. No evidence is required for this indicator. It is also not validated, meaning there is no check on the input provided. If the entity participated last year, the indicator will pre-fill with last year's answers. In these cases, Review the response and or evidence carefully because circumstances may have changed. As for all indicators, a context box is provided at the end of each indicator should the entity wish to provide more context to investors or fund managers reviewing the entity's report. This is optional and for reporting purposes only. The second indicator of the leadership aspect addresses ESG leadership commitments. This indicator assesses the entity's commitment to ESG leadership standards or principles. The various commitments are divided based on their nature, that is, whether they are general ESG commitments like the UN Global Compact, or specific to an environmental, social, or governance issue like the Science-Based Targets Initiative. They are also divided based on whether making the commitment obliges action or not. This indicator is not scored and is for reporting purposes only. The next indicator is on ESG objectives. Clear environmental, social and governance or ESG objectives help to address material issues and integrate them into overall day-to-day -day management practices. Note that more points are gained for specific objectives. Objectives should be actionable and formally adopted. For this indicator, you are required to provide evidence to support your answer. This evidence may be publicly available, 
in which case provide a hyperlink, or not publicly available, in which case upload a document. More points are gained for publicly available objectives. This indicator is subject to manual validation, meaning that the evidence that you provide is reviewed by our third-party validation provider. For more information on validation, please refer to the validation lesson. The next indicator addresses whether there is an individual responsible for, for ESG and or climate related issues. Select the type of role assigned the main responsibility for ESG and for climate related issues for the entity. If there are multiple people with the same responsibility, for example in a team, provide details for the most senior of these people. The next indicator on a senior decision maker for ESG and climate related issues follows a similar structure. The last indicator in the leadership aspect is on ESG factors in the annual performance targets of personnel. The indicator is looking for targets to be in place with real consequences, either financial or non-financial. It also looks for whom the targets and consequences apply. More points are gained where consequences are financial. The second aspect of the management component is policies. There are three indicators in this aspect, all very similar, one for environmental, one for social, and one for governance policies. This indicator applies materiality-based scoring. This means that only the issues that are material to the entity need be addressed. Which issues are material is determined by the GRESB materiality assessment. For more information, see the lesson on materiality-based scoring. Only issues deemed of medium and high relevance count towards the score for this indicator. Issues of low or no relevance will not contribute to the score. In scoring, issues of high relevance are allocated double the weight of issues of medium relevance. To achieve full points, policies need to cover all of the material issues. Thank you for taking the time to complete this lesson. We hope that it helped you get a better understanding of the GRESB Infrastructure Asset Assessment and prepared you to complete the assessment accurately. We recommend that you next complete the lesson, Asset Assessment Management Components Part 2. For any questions, you can contact us at gresb.com contact.